Good morning and welcome to Zion Lutheran Church of Pittsfield. I'm Reverend Anna Wiffenden, the transition pastor here, and it's my honor to welcome you as we gather together, separated by geography, but together in spirit this Sunday morning. We're grateful to everyone who is part of creating our worship service and to all of you for being here in this way. This morning, we gather not only with one another at Zion Lutheran virtually, but also with the entire Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, our denomination. We, as we speak our shared confession, and as we hear a sermon from our presiding bishop, Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. I wanna remind you that during the interlude after the sermon, you're invited to type your prayer requests into the chat box, and Julia will read them aloud during the prayers of the people. And this morning, thanks to one of your feedback, pieces of feedback, we are adding in a time of thanksgiving as well as our time of request. So think about what it is that you are grateful for that you like to name during that time. And I will also remind you that there is a delay between Facebook and Zoom. And if your prayer doesn't get spoken aloud, it has been seen and witnessed and prayed together. If you have a candle in your worship space, I invite you to light it now as we still our bodies, quiet our minds, and open our hearts to God's presence here with us. As a church and as a denomination as a whole, we confess together. We confess the sin of racism and condemn racist rhetoric and the ideology of white supremacy. God have mercy. God have mercy. As a church, we confess, repent, and repudiate the times when this church has been silent in the face of racial injustice. God have mercy. God have mercy. Racism is deeply ingrained within the ELCA, a predominantly white church. It is deeply embedded within the individual congregations whose members continue to foster stereotypes and support policies that actively hurt people of color. God have mercy. God have mercy. As church, we declare the enslavement of black bodies and the removal of indigenous peoples established racism in the United States, a truth this nation and this church have yet to fully embrace. God have mercy. God have mercy. Rooted in slavery, racism is manifest through the history of Jim Crow policies, racial segregation, the terror of lynching, extrajudicial killings by law enforcement, and the disproportionate incarceration of people of color. God, have mercy. God, have mercy. As church, we lament the institutional racism of discriminatory treatment within the call process, inequitable compensation of clergy of color, racial segregation, divestment from Black communities and congregations, systemic policies and organizational practices, and a failure to fully include the gifts of leadership and worship styles of Black people, Indigenous people, and people of color. God have mercy. God have mercy. Confessions are empty promises without meaningful actions, actions that are grounded in prayer, education, and soul-searching repentance. The sin of racism separates us from one another. Though we trust that we are reconciled to God through Christ's death and resurrection, we seek such life-giving reconciliation with one another. As we repent, let us not turn back to ideologies that promote white supremacy. We trust that God can make all things new. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you for making one human family of all the peoples of the earth and for creating all the wonderfully wonderful diversity of cultures, races, and ethnicities. Enrich, Enrich our, our lives by ever widening circles of fellowship and show us your presence in those who differ most from us. Forgive us for when we have been silent and apathetic 
in the face of racial intolerance and bigotry, both overt and subtle, public and private. And, and take, take away, away the, the arrogance, arrogance and, and hatred, hatred which, which infect our hearts. hearts. Break down the walls which separate us. And, and help, help us, us to work for justice and dignity that will enable us to become your beloved community. community. Empower us to speak boldly for justice and truth and help us to deal with one another without hatred or bitterness, working together with mutual forbearance and respect. And, and work, work through our struggles and confusions to, to accomplish, accomplish your purposes. purposes. Amen. We give thanks together for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus's wounded side and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font and for the water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that spirit that we may have right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace through Jesus Christ, your son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness God called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together, God called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. 
And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals, wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in the divine image. In the image of God, humankind was created. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that had been made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished in all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that had been done and God rested on the seventh day from all the work that had been done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it, God rested from all the work that God had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now read together our responsive psalm, Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens, out of the mouths of infants and children, you have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, in whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son, whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God, and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the Spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth. 
and in every human being. God is spirit closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God as creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many, black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity and equity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. 
Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise. And I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, and deacons as they lead the church in these trying times. We pray especially for our presiding bishop, Elizabeth, and those who serve in the church-wide organization, and our synod bishop, Jim, and staff. With all the baptized, may they be strengthened to share the good news that the fullness of God dwells in and among us, even when we are physically separated. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. 
God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Instill in us a deeper wonder for the created world you've called good and a greater humility for our place within it. Kindle in us a creative and resilient spirit as we care for the earth and its creatures. Hear us, O oh God, <clears throat> your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage leaders to seek wisdom and respond compassionately to those most in need. Further the work of advocates who pursue justice in often ignored communities. Increase the desire for listening and collaboration amid rising tensions and mistrust. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of care, you created us in your image. May we recognize your likeness in one another, especially those who are isolated or in prison. Protect vulnerable children and adults from domestic violence or neglect. Give courage to caregivers, health workers, and all whose work ensures the safety and well being of others. Console, heal, and nourish all in need. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of connection, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as they nurture relationships in new ways. As schools break for the summer and activities are canceled or changed, meet the needs of children in our churches and communities. Provide support and companionship for the elderly. Equip our churches to respond to those needing food, housing, or other assistance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Abundant God, we thank you for the many ways that you love us and support us. Today, we especially thank you for family, for Bishop Eaton and her prophetic words, for the crisp morning, the green garden, the vibrant flowers, the beautiful music, and birds. God of nurture, we thank you for holding all whom you have created and love. We pray today, especially for Luca, Brittany, and Richard, Amy's dad, Barbara, Chal, Alex, Kali, and Melanie, Isme, Gail, Catherine's mother, Steve, Patricia, Megan, Diane, Linda, Doris, Jeff, Tracy, Andrea, Helen, Sylvia, Suzanne, Edward, Mike, Ramiro, Annette, Maida, Carol, Barb, Janet, Laura, William, Julaine, David, John, Carolyn, William, Lori, the Sato family, the Geary family. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all time and in our lives especially Brianna Taylor, George Floyd, and Tony McDade, and Julia, Jean, John, Ruth, Bob, Tom, Marjorie, Jim, and Phyllis. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Julia. Blessed by God and even the hardest times, we are called to give to the church, the community, and the world. And you give in many ways. And so as we gather together this morning, we ask God's blessing on all of the ways that you are giving. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is 
Great, O God, and your gifts sustain our lives. You enrich us with good things and bless us with care and love. With acts of giving, we express our thanks. By caring for others, we honor your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We join with the rest of the ELCA in giving thanks for the word this morning. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for your word you made all things, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people, Israel, to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on a desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word may flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness, forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and praise. praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith increase our hope, deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our, our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today's hymn is 763, My Life Flows On in Endless Song, and this was requested by Kathy Anderson.
Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us in worship this morning. I think it's uh, especially important during these difficult times for us to come together and express our faith and reflect on what's going on in the world and figuring out how we as a community of faith can, can help drive change and, and take action. Thanks to Amy this morning for providing our music today. Um, it's always great to hear those familiar hymns. Thanks to Ryan and Corey for preparation and the technical leadership to make all this come together. Thanks to Julia and Pastor Anna this morning for leading us in worship. And thanks, we give thanks and prayers to our Bishop Elizabeth Eaton for her message this morning and her leadership and her work um, on the church on a, on a wide basis to help us become a stronger church. Give a big shout out this morning to Helen Kimple and the plant sale team. Um, it just made me so happy yesterday to see the activity going on in our church. People actually, a few people going in and out of the doors. Um, a big thanks to Kyle McGrath for running the plants out to our customers. He was sweating yesterday, working hard. Helen and the team had him working hard. So thanks to Kyle. Thanks to Betsy Bean and Helen and Pauline Giacoletto for digging up all those plants. Uh, they look beautiful. I think the customers have to be thrilled with them. Thanks to Ryan for all the logistics and the communication work to make it all happen, make the online ordering work. James Wheeler did all the table setup. Uh, Margaret uh, Hintz was there yesterday for support during the event. Um, Keith took pictures. Um, it was just really great to see, to see that activity. And we raised, the team raised $776 uh, for the church. So thanks uh, to that team for that work and we'll be able to put that money to, to good use. I have a message from uh, Jim McGrath who is our transition team leader. So just envision Jim being here, uh, much taller, better looking. Um, but here's Jim's method, method, message. Um, I am pleased to report that pastoral transition planning has officially begun. Working with a stellar group of Zion members, we have begun the deep dive into the necessary work for an effective transition process. One of the first things we will undertake is the wide distribution of an online survey called the Church Assessment Tool, or CAT for short, which we will begin to make available in several weeks. We hope for broad participation in the survey as the results will help us gather the most current information for the call team to use during the process for selecting pastoral candidates for consideration. On behalf of the transition team, we look forward to working with you all on this most important process, which will help to divine Zion for years to come. So please stay tuned for the announcement on the availability and the instructions for the survey. And please feel free to reach out to, to Jim at any time with thoughts, and we thank you all for your prayers and support during this transition work of, of the team. So thanks for that, Jim, and thanks for all the work of the, the transition team. On, thir on this Thursday, June 11th, we will have dinner church again. And for those of you that participated, um, you know that it's a time of song and prayer and good conversation about our faith. We'll have dinner church at both 5.30 and 7 o'clock on Thursday. Um, and it's a great experience. If you didn't participate last time, I really encourage you to, to join us this Thursday. Please RSVP to the office email, which is office at zionlutheranpittsfield.org. Don't forget to send in your hymn request for Amy. If you name it, she'll play it. Um, and she's looking forward to getting more and more requests and, and hearing us all sing loudly at home. So send those requests in to Amy. Uh, coming up, uh, we will discuss Pastor Anna's new book, This is God's Table, Finding Church Beyond the Walls. And we'll do that on June 23rd, July 7th, and July 21st. Mark Messina will lead our discussions for the first two sessions. And then Pastor Anna will join us and lead us in some discussion and be able to answer questions about her experience and how she came about found, founding that ministry and writing that book. Um, so check the newsletter for more details. Um, I encourage you to order the book and um, join us for that book group. I hope everyone was able to join us uh, this past Thursday for Jazz Vespers. Um, they gave us, uh, the musicians gave us some brand new music. Um, it was just wonderful. 
if you weren't able to join us, um, it's still out there on Facebook. So go, go take a look and um, experience that, uh, that wonderful service. And then finally, don't forget after the worship, we will have coffee hour. So the link is in your Sunday bulletin. Join us for coffee hour and see some familiar faces and friends and share what's going on in, in your world. So with that, I will turn it back over to Pastor Anna for the blessing. Thank you, Dave. And I also want to mention if you are feeling your heart stirred by what is going on in our country and by Bishop Eaton's um, call, know that there are conversations about how we at Zion Lutheran can be part of actively doing anti-racism work, both with our, some of our ecumenical partners in the area and um, within our congregation. So the newly formed Social Justice and Community Outreach Committee is having conversations and I welcome um, all of you to, to join in and stay tuned to how, how are we going to take that next step together. Um, it's one thing to proclaim a confession in, in a moment. It's another to continue to take on this work of the work of anti-racism work in our, in our community. And so I hope that we can continue to be in conversation together about what that looks like in, in, our, con in our congregation. And feel free to reach out to me um, or any member of the Social Justice Committee if you have further insights and thoughts and offerings as we learn and grow together. Let us go into our day with this blessing. May God, the source of glory, God, the word of life, God, the spirit of truth, increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen.